At this point, I would like to present the most well-known talk show host in Israel, journalist, author, and even named Israel's sexiest man of 2008. Please help me welcome Mr. Yair Lapid. After this intro, I'm really curious to know what I have to say. <laughs> My father, Joseph Tommy Lapid, who was just Minister of Justice and Deputy Prime Minister of Israel, and a dear friend to Arno, passed away three months ago for the second time. The first time was in February 1945. My father was 13. He was living with my grandmother in a basement in the Budapest ghetto. At that stage, mostly of the meat of dead horses they found on the street. And the Russians were already closing on Budapest, so the Germans, along with the Hungarian fascists, start taking out the Jews in death convoys. Most of them, they led into the Danube River in where they were ordered to dig holes into the snow, into the ice, and then they shot them inside. In one Monday, very early in the morning, the Germans surrounded my father's block and they start taking them in a death convoy that had approximately 600 people. And they were walking down the streets of Budapest, and people were looking at them from high windows, knowing that they're doomed. And suddenly, for a second, a Russian plane lowered over this convoy, and people were starting yelling and screaming, and the Germans were shooting the Schmeisser machine guns into the sky. And my grandmother pushed my father into a public lavatory, a small public lavatory painted in green. And she said, pretend that you're peeing. So he did. And the convoy left without them. And 45 minutes later, there was no one left from this convoy except for my father and my grandmother. So there he was, standing alone in the street, free. The yellow patch was taking off his clothes, and he, was, he could go anywhere. Here in America, in the Midwest, there were thousands and thousands of miles which nobody lived in. In Australia, there were thousands and thousands of miles that nobody ever stepped foot in. Paris was already liberated, Mussolini was already hanged in Italy, London of course was free, but my father, a 13-year-old kid, had no place to go to. So he went back to the ghetto. He went back to the ghetto, to the same basement, hoping only that no one will come and pick him and take him before the Russians will arrive. I am a statistical error. He was supposed to die and I was supposed not to be born. But yet, here we are and we do have a place to go to. Israel was established for us to have a place to go to. I know we are here tonight to celebrate Arnold's success in movies and television and the fact that he's such a creative guy. But there's another side to his creativity that is not that flamboyant, that is dead serious, that has to stay secretive. And we all know how hard that is for Anon. And I know some of the people here are movie makers, and therefore, by definition, storytellers, people of imagination. So if you do have an imagination, 
think of the things you do know about Israel's capabilities that are not to be discussed, and then think of all the creative ways to get these abilities, and then take out your notebooks and your laptops and imagine as you like still you won't be able to scrape the surface of the things Arnon did for Israel. So everybody came here to thank Arnon for the things we do know. I came here to thank Arnon for the things we don't know and for the fact I have a place to go to. Thank you. Good evening, Anon. Anon represents, first and foremost, the beautiful face of Israel, a true pioneer, a man of values, a bold and original thinker, a man who always puts the interest of his people and his nation first, wherever he is, whatever he's doing. And this evening, Anon, while sitting among your friends, your colleagues, and the representative of Israel, honored by the Citizens Empowerment Center in Israel, I feel that it will be right to quote a few words of a song. We in Israel know what in Anon we've got a friend. And you should know that in Israel you have many. I'd like to thank uh, all of you to take this opportunity to give special thanks to my friend Arnon Milchen for his outstanding contribution to education in Israel. He is a true leader and I salute him for his hard work and dedication to make a difference in the lives of our younger generation. I would also like to thank Mr. Rizak Nazorian, Parvez, and the Citizens Empowerment Center for their important contribution in strengthening Israel's democratic fabric and educating the younger generation for social responsibility and civic action. I'd also like to thank the Los Angeles Consulate and the youth movements for their support and involvement. May our friendship and shared goals continue to thrive. Thank you. One of the marks of a great achievement is to remember where you came from. Arnon has never forgot where he came from. Uh, he came from Israel, he comes back to Israel, he invests in Israel. He invests not only in the business sense, but also in the emotional um, deeply personal way that he's uh, been attached to Israel and Israeli projects. Uh, anything from trying to sponsor a great university to uh, uh, all the other uh, achievements that he's had in the business field. He has uh, been so many things. He's been a, an athlete, a soccer player, um, an intellectual athlete, uh, a businessman, uh, a successful uh, film producer, uh, running den dozens of companies. Um, this requires uh, renaissance capabilities, uh, and Arnon has them in abundance. But I think the most important thing is that he's always remembered, uh, remembered his country, remembered his roots, remembered his friends, and I consider myself lucky to be one of them. So should you. Mazal tov, Arnon. I am not really surprised. The youth movement of Israel and the organization to empower the human being has elected Arnon to be the guest of honor tonight. He has one important thing in, in himself, Arnon. He never ages. No matter what you'll read about him, he belongs always to the youth movement. He likes it and has a capacity to remain young. It's a rare combination he is generally a very tranquil person, but with an extremely storming heart. He cannot sit in any place for five minutes because he thinks there is a stormy attraction awaiting somewhere, here, there, all over the places, all over the world, all over the humanity. And while he's not nervous, he's totally curious and this capacity to be curious 
leads people to great things and long ways. So he went to things that nobody in his surrounding or his family would ever believe that he will go to. I can hardly recall our known being pessimistic about something. He feels it's a waste of time. So he created dreams, he made friends, he contributed to important causes. You should be all the time active and wondering and doing and connecting and overcoming prejudices and obstacles and flows and not to give up but to move ahead, ahead, ahead. Moving ahead, ahead, ahead is our non Milchan. Thank you. Uh, Yair, if you would like to come up, please, and uh, present to Peter Chernin. Peter Chernin as CEO of News Corp, probably one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, was a great, great friend of Arnon long before that, and will stay a great, great friend of Arnon long after. I would like to invite him to the stage to congratulate Arnon. Thank you. Thank you, Yair. So, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So, I clearly was given the wrong memo. You know, I, I was told to come up here and roast Arnon, but that seems to have been uh, the wrong information. But, okay. So, first of all, I want to thank Yair. And, and like Yair, you know, Yair told you a beautiful, moving story about his father. And I'd like to talk about my father a little bit. And, you know, when I was a young man, my father gave me three very important pieces of advice. First, work hard every day. Every day get up and work hard. Second, always be kind to those less fortunate. And third, never ever tell jokes about a man with easy, easy access to weapons of mass destruction. But obviously, I never listened to my father. So, I am truly honored to be here tonight during the 60th anniversary of the State of Israel for this incredibly special evening as we gather together to honor strength, to honor determination. And this is so fitting and so appropriate because, because Israel has always benefited from impressively strong people who have the courage to stand up for what they believe in, to defend their territory, to claim outright what is deservedly theirs, to force for change after years of reckless self-destruction. But I have to tell you, in, in choosing Arnon, you chose the wrong person to honor tonight. We should really be here to honor Amanda, Arnon's wife tonight. Because Amanda has taken this total lunatic and transformed him into her little obedient lapdog. Right? Now that's real power. Right? And Amanda is such an amazing presence that, that she truly captivates everyone around her. And, and Shimon Perez, if you get this message, keep your hands to yourself. Amanda is taken, and she's taken by a fabled arms dealer, no less. So leave her alone. In all serious note, this town has its share of people who make great movies and great TV, but nobody does it like Arnon. He, he exceeds the best of them with, with movies like War of the Roses, Brazil, Once Upon a Time in America, LA Confidential, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and many more as